Okay, hey, good morning. Uh, welcome to our webinar and thank you for taking the time from your very busy schedules to learn more about some products offered by Ineos Star uh, We have a very diverse product portfolio, uh, but today due to time limitations, we'll be focusing on two of our products that are used in a wide range of uh, medical applications. Uh, first, we'll be talking about our Xylar uh, Clear Blend product line, which is one of the many products found within our transparent specialties portfolio. Also, we'd we'll be talking about our Lustran 348 ABS, which is one of the most commonly used resins in the medical industry today. But before we get started, um, let's take a short moment to introduce our team here. Uh, my name is Alex Silvestri. I am the Global Director for Healthcare Markets for Ineos Star Illusion. Uh, within our company, I am responsible for setting the strategic direction uh, for our products within this market space. And I am also responsible for governing our medical policy, which provides guidance on uh, the suitability of our products and a variety of medical device applications. Lisa, would you like to introduce yourself? My name is Lisa Lindsley. Uh, I have been with the company a very long time. Uh, I have a background in technical service and in my present job is market development for our healthcare grade. So I work with uh, medical OEMs uh, and support our distributors uh, with medical applications uh, with our medical grades. Thanks for joining us today. Hello, and I am uh, Steve Delisle. I'm also a market development manager for healthcare in the Americas. So just like Lisa, I'm responsible for working with our healthcare OEMs and other healthcare customers to kind of implement our uh, healthcare policy here in the Americas. All right, thanks guys. All right, so uh, before we get started and talked about uh, those various product lines, uh, maybe I'll just say a few words about our company. So for those of you who may not be familiar with our company, uh, Inyo Star Illusion was formed just about 11 years ago. Um, it was a joint venture um, that was completed, combining the assets of, of two of the industry leaders to form the largest styrenic company in the world. Um, so although our company formally took shape back in the 2011 timeframe, um, the combined history of our heritage companies, our, our technical expertise, and reach into the subsequent, uh, subsequent markets began as far back as, believe it or not, in the 1930s. Uh, we are truly a global company with close to 4,000 employees around the world. We have field offices in each region, uh, in the Americas, in Europe, in the uh, Asian region, uh, with complementary manufacturing uh, facilities and R&D centers uh, as well. So if you look at the graphic in the upper left portion of the slide, um, you can see that we do support a number of industries. Uh, these represent the industries in which Inuit Star Illusion has identified a strategic importance for our long-term growth ambitions. The healthcare segment, which we will focus on today, is one of these areas where we actually will coordinate efforts on a global scale. Uh, we do have the most diverse dynamic portfolio, uh, spanning everything from commodity resins, such as uh, polystyrene to ABS, to a variety of clear resin specialties. So although we are only focusing on two product lines today, we represent some of the most well-known names that are commonly used in the market. Uh, many of you on the phone or on this webinar may be familiar with, such as K-Resin, Turlux, Starlux, to just name a few. Um, but before I get this uh, turned over to Steve, where he can focus our discussion on Xylar and Clearblend, I, I did want to highlight that if you have any questions, um, you should note that on the upper portion of your screen, there is a Q&A button. Uh, you can log a question there. And we will do our very best to try to answer these questions towards the end of this presentation. Um, I will mention that this is a very diverse audience um, on, on our webinar today. Um, so with that, we are trying to protect the identities of all those attending. So if you are submitting a question, uh, don't feel pressure to submit your name. Actually, we prefer that you leave it anonymous. Uh, we will make every effort to answer each question. But if for some reason, if we read a question, uh, that we feel may be too specific for this general audience, we will probably follow up with you separately, okay? But don't worry, we will try to answer every question and make sure that we answer those questions that don't get addressed during this a lot of time. And then lastly, um, for your reference, uh, this webinar is being recorded. So if anyone is interested in referencing this uh, subject matter later, a link will be found on our website and it should be active sometime next week, okay? 
Uh, so with that, let me turn it over to Steve so he could start the, the presentation on Dollar and ClearBlend. Thank you, Alex. So today, uh, the topic I'll be speaking with you about is uh, Xylar. And Xylar is our methyl methacrylate butadiene styrene resin, or MBS resin. And it is a clear impact modified copolymer resin. And it has some really, really great properties for uh, many applications. It really is found in a wide breadth of these applications due to its versatility. And that's mainly um, a component of its toughness and its clarity. It has excellent chemical resistance. It's really an easy uh, material to process. So a lot of molders really like working with it based on its flow, low moisture retention. So there's little to no pre-drying. And there's also uh, the low processing temperatures, which makes it, again, uh, some energy savings and a really easy material to work. Another reason why it's uh, such an ideal material for so many applications is that based on this kind of toughness versus stiffness curve, uh, based on the application, we have a product that should meet your needs. And, and you can kind of see this here. And in green, you can see all the materials that we have uh, available domestically here in the Americas. And then in blue are two European specific grades. But another great uh, attribute of Xylar is that all of the intermediates for this product are made in-house by Enios Star Revolution at a couple sites here. And then those intermediates can be either blended or compounded to these final products in other regions. So Xylar 631, for example, is available in uh, several regions and, and it really helps with the overall supply security while at the same time by controlling the raw materials and the intermediates gives us a real opportunity to uh, have great control over the production process while still having multiple production sites for them. So why is this such a great versatile material? Well, you see a, a great kind of uh, suite of properties here. Again, absolutely great processing, really a great choice for a lot of molders with the pre -dry, uh, low, little to no pre-drying, with the low processing temperatures and with the excellent flow properties. In addition to that, it's uh, excellent chemical resistance both the many detergents, cleaning solutions, and alcohols. But in addition to that, it has great environmental stress cracking resistance. So even after being exposed for long periods of time to different chemicals, it still uh, has great mechanical property retention afterwards, which is uh, important in many applications. As mentioned before, it has excellent clarity and, and you can see that in, in parts molded by it. And this comes kind of into, into play in a lot of applications where that's important, whether it's you know, reservoirs for fluid discharge where practitioners need to see the different fluid levels to, to measure it for the patient, or if it's in a syringe when you're drawing up medication, it, this clarity comes in handy in, in many applications. In addition to that, you have excellent bonding properties, even with dissimilar resins uh, due to its unique polarity. And it's compatible with a, a whole host of different solvents and other bonding methods. So it's uh, really, again, easy to work with, easy for assemblers to work with in addition to the molders. I'll go in, in a minute into a little bit more depth on the regulatory compliance, but just as, at a high level, it does have a drug master file. It is compliant with ISO 10993 and with USP class six. So we really believe in our healthcare portfolio here at Ineos Star Revolution. And I think it shows in, in kind of the regulatory offerings we do provide. In addition to that, uh, obviously in the medical space, the ability to be sterilized is very important and it maintains outstanding property retention with essentially all the major sterilization methods except for autoclave or the high heat sterilization. But if you're looking with uh, ethylene oxide, gamma, E-beam, NO2, great property retention, great uh, resistance to yellowing with these sterilization methods. And then again, we, we kind of highlighted really one of the great strengths of Xylar is its toughness and its impact strength and the ability to find the right product along that toughness versus stiffness curve for your specific application. So it's really an exceptional product in that way. So I mentioned before, I think one of our real strengths here at Ineos Star Revolution is our regulatory support specific to the healthcare space. And you'll see HD referenced a lot here, that's uh, healthcare and diagnostics. And we have several different packages, our full service package, our essential package, and our standard food contact package. It's important to quickly note that we support the use of products in our full service and essential packages into risk class one and two applications and our standard food contact packages into only risk class one. So it's just important to note as, as we're talking here that we don't support 
risk class three applications, and we prohibit use in implantables. But getting into this now, what is it that we really provide with this regulatory support? Number one is that we lock our formulations in this drug master file. And if we are to make a change, which is a very rare event, in the essential HD package, we do have a 12 month notification of change. So any customer using this product will be notified prior, uh, at least 12 months prior to actually implementing this change. In addition, in addition, we provide food contact statements and we have USP class six and ISO 10993. So if you would like to see these biocompatibility summary reports, for example, um, with a quick exchange of information, we can provide you those summary reports to show you which subsections are tested and high level results. And even if you needed the actual test results and test reports, um, after signing a non-disclosure agreement with us, we'd be able to provide that as well. So what you can really be sure of is that we test above and beyond what is required, even to the standard of some actual medical devices, much less resins used. And so with this, you can see both our commitment to this market space, and you can be confident that by selecting this resin, uh, you'll, you'll not run into biocompatibility due to the, the presence of our resin in your product. And really, I, I believe wholeheartedly in this tagline, which is really that our products meet the regulatory needs with the most demanding OEMs. We really do provide great support. And again, I think that's one of the highlights of our entire healthcare portfolio. Looking at Xylar, I kind of wanted to go over one of the best newer kind of uh, applications for it that we found. It's We've done a lot of research lately and it's, it's really shown great. And so, one big occupational health and safety issue for healthcare practitioners are needle stick injuries. This is especially true for nurses, for medical assistants, and, and occasionally physicians, where when they go to take a needle tip syringe and either pierce a septum for a vial to draw up medication or to deliver that medication in an IV access port, you know, by simply uh, slightly missing that, you can stick yourself in the finger or the hand, and it's actually quite a, a large issue within the space. And several OEMs have identified this issue and come up with a great solution, which is the blunt needleless cannula. And by a really clever mechanical design, you can take a blunt portion that you can thread onto the uh, top of a syringe, and it can actually pierce the septum and draw out the medication or deliver it into IV access port without the risk of an injury due to, again, it being a blunt plastic part. And then after that, if needed, uh, you can screw on a, an actual needle to the syringe. So it's a really clever solution. And uh, as I mentioned, we've done a lot of research and we, we were looking, okay, what are the material requirements for a cannula? Uh, and a big one obviously would be chemical resistance based on the drugs being used, the cleaning detergents to sterilize it at the point of use and Xylar meets that very easily. In addition, you look at the dimensional stability, the ability to thread it onto the top of a syringe consistently and with a very good um, tight locking feature. And that again is a real strength for Xylar. You look at the rigidity, the ability to pierce these kind of thicker rubber septums in the vials and without deflecting, cracking or breaking, again, Xylar performs great here, similarly with the impact strength and that toughness. Obviously, you need something that's biocompatible. We're here with ISO 10993, USP class six, that is not a problem for us. And again, with sterilization, compatible with all major sterilization techniques except for autoclave, which is not typical for this application. So in general, you can see really Xylar is a very cost-effective solution to meet these requirements. If you look at other resins being used here, we typically come in as a really cost-effective solution and a really solid uh, technical, uh, technically compliant uh, resin for this application. But beyond cannulas, we actually have quite a large market presence in many other applications with Xylar and ClearBlend. This includes syringe bodies, including low dead space syringes, which are really uh, becoming more and more important these days. You look at these urine containers or transparent reservoirs, where I mentioned before the necessity to have that high clarity, but also that toughness to pass, like a drop test with it filled with fluid and have that really strong toughness to be able to handle those requirements. And then you look at with the easy processing, the easy flowing, the ability to really consistently fill a lot of um, large cavity tools, uh, respiratory filters, connectors, enclosures, some of these smaller parts, the great flowing characteristics and everything makes it a, it a great choice for these as well. 
So if you do see any opportunities here, uh, you'll have our contact information at the end, but I think we could have a really great exchange on this part. So to get into now, Lisa, she'll tell you a little bit more about a long time product in our portfolio, which is Lost Strand 348. Thank you, Steve. Uh, so I'm going to talk about our Lustrand 348 uh, material. It is an ABS, an acrylonitrile butadiene styrene. Uh, it is has been around for decades. Uh, it's always been and continues to be manufactured at our Addiston, Ohio uh, plant. Uh, and it is uh, the premier healthcare ABS grade uh, on the market, um, uh, we feel. Uh, it has some key features which we'll go over. And then we're also going to talk about one particular application, uh, an auto injector. So at a high level, uh, the key features, it has uh, really exceptional balance of uh, impact strength, toughness, and stiffness in the part. Uh, it has great chemical resistance, um, both um, chemical resistance and environmental stress crack resistance uh, properties, uh, dimensional stability uh, of the molded parts, an outstanding processability and bondability. Um, so why uh, uh, the specific uh, attributes of the Lustrand uh, 348? Um, it's easy to mold. It has fast molding time. Um, it has a really um, a nice uh, melt flow of around 14 grams uh, per 10 minutes at uh, 22010 and it molds really easily. It's, uh, you're not gonna have a problem molding this, uh, especially medical parts where there's multi-cavitation, it molds quite easily um, um, and with uh, fast cycle times. Uh, I mentioned that it has really good uh, chemical resistance. We've tested this to many common healthcare uh, disinfectants and, cle and cleaners, uh, things like bleach, betadine, glutaraldehyde, lipids, isopropyl alcohol, it has really good uh, chemical resistance uh, to these. Uh, uh, excellent uh, colorability. Um, it is available in um, three primary uh, pre-colors from Ineo Star Revolution, uh, a white, uh, it's called WT012002. It's a very clean uh, looking bright white. We also have a uh, more creamy color white, and then we have a pre-colored black. Uh, material, um, but it could also uh, color quite easily at the press or uh, via compounder. Um, great printability on the parts. You could print easily on the parts. Uh, it has a great feel and aesthetic, meaning that the parts in, in their hand, it, well, when you feel them, they feel nice, uh, have nice um, little bit of weight to them and are, are nice looking parts. Um, great dimensional stability. This is really critical when you have two parts that need to mate together uh, or various parts um, of a application, a medical application that needs to come together. Uh, having dimensional stability on the parts is critical. Um, it, great impact strength, uh, excellent toughness, superior um, um, toughness to stiffness properties. Um, I, I would classify our 348 as a ductile material. It is not a brittle material, but it has this balance of being tough, yet the parts themselves are uh, on the stiffer side. So that is great, um, especially for little medical uh, parts. Um, outstanding property retention uh, with multiple uh, sterilization methods, as Steve mentioned. We have data on ethylene oxide, gamma, e-beam, NO2, everything but autoclave. Um, our parts uh, could go through. We have property, um, physical property retention and then color uh, retention uh, on these uh, sterilization methods. And then our um, regulatory, um, uh, it, it, all our Western 348 has a drug master file number as do all of our medical grades. And we have tested it and is compliant with our, uh, with um, ISO 10993 and USP class six. And we'll talk a little bit more about the um, package that the Lustran 348 falls under. So this falls into our premier medical package uh, that we offer. Uh, and the key attribute here is that it comes with a, a 36 month notification of change. Um, and he, it comes with a locked formulation uh, uh, per the drug master file. Um, and 
would come with the, the 36 month notification of change uh, if we needed to change anything to the drug master file. So that is that is a, a key attribute of the material. It comes with food contact statements, USD class six, ISO 10993, as uh, Steve has explained. Um, these are all readily available. We can provide them uh, to you. Um, it really does meet the needs of the most out, uh, demanding medical uh, applications and the requirements of the medical OEM. So we're going to talk about the particular application of an auto-injector. Uh, and I wanted to go over what is an auto-injector. It's a medical device. It's usually uh, single use and disposable. It delivers one dose of a particular drug to a patient. Uh, and it's delivered either by a spring-loaded needle that comes out the end of it, or a gas cylinder which shoots the um, the liquid drug uh, into the skin of the patient uh, with a very fine uh, uh, line. Um, and there are different components to the auto injector uh, that make up uh, uh, an auto injector. So there's the top base, um, the injection button, the locking ring, the upper housing. There's all these parts to the auto injector, but what they really need are for these out for these different parts. They need stiff parts. They don't want them to flex in this particular application. In some cases, they want them to be colorable. Uh, they want them to feel nice in your hand. They need some impact strength, right? Because occasionally these parts get dropped. Um, uh, dimensional stability, toughness, and um, colorable, printable, and the feel uh, on these parts. So why would you pick 348 for these uh, various parts of an auto injector? Well, dimensional stability. When you mold the part, you want it to maintain the, the um, dimensions of the part. And 348 has great dimensional stability. Uh, it has this balance of a rigid part with impact strength and toughness. Uh, that balance is really nice with Luster and 348. Uh, good chemical resistance um, to all of the typical uh, healthcare um, cleaners, disinfectants. It's really nice that way. Good printability. You want to be able to maybe print on it or have graduated uh, marks on the the print the uh, molded uh, 348 parts. Bonding. All of these parts need to come together somehow. Uh, and the 348 bonds really nice. You could use ultrasonic uh, uh, welding. You could use adhesive bonding. You could use solvent bonding on it. Um, we have a lot of data on bonding, different bonding methods uh, with the 348. Um, good colorability. Uh, I mentioned that it comes in the, the three different pre-colored, but it is also very easily colored at the press um, or via a compounder. Uh, it colors quite nicely with the um, I would recommend the 348 as the carrier uh, for the colorant. Sterilization, um, all 348 um, parts can be sterilized with the um, typical sterilization methods. And again, we have the data on that if you need it. Uh, chemical resistance, and then um, we've mentioned, and then the regulatory compliance uh, of the material make it an, an a really a nice fit with the auto injector components. The, there, there's the auto injector um, requirements have been met by the 348 as far as dimensional stability, the impact strength, the crack resistance, the printability, the bonding, sterilization, all of these, all of these uh, properties make it an ideal candidate for an auto injector. In addition, there are uh, a long list of other additional um, applications that 348 can go into. Inhalers, uh, inhaler bodies in particular, um, the two parts that come together that make an inhaler uh, body, the 348 is often used in that. Uh, drug delivery housings, there's uh, a wide range of novel drug delivery housings that 348 has been used in. Um, insulin and injection pens uh, for insulin, uh, has also uh, um, 
a really nice application for the Luster N348 instrument handle, handles and opaque connectors and enclosures um, also uh, can be used with the Luster N348. So we will turn it now over to um, uh, Alex for questions that you may have. Okay. Hey, thanks, Lisa. Hey, thanks, Steve. Uh, thanks for the great uh, overall summary on those two uh, product lines. Uh, so, as I mentioned earlier, if you if you have any questions that you'd like to submit, if you click on that uh, button at the upper portion of your screen, the Q and A button, you could go ahead and uh, uh, type that in, and I will try to quickly filter through them and uh, uh, read them out loud, and we'll do our best to try to answer them. Uh, actually, we do have one question that came in that. Um, could the presentation be shared later on? And uh, we, yes, we will be sending out this presentation out to everyone who signed up for this webinar. And like I mentioned earlier, if there's uh, some information you'd like to review, um, this this webinar is being recorded and a link will be found um, on our website sometime next week. So you'll have that in addition to a copy of this explicit presentation. OK, uh, we just had another question pop in here. I'm not familiar with Xylar. For comparison's sake, which resins does it most commonly compete with? Um, Steve, uh, maybe I'll turn this over to you to answer. Yeah, thank you. Um, <clears throat> so for Xylar, we most often see it offsetting with uh, polycarbonate, acrylic, PMMA. Those are kind of the top ones we would often see Xylar as a good option. Again, typically a pretty cost effective option in that case as well. All right, a uh, question came in. Um, how many doses of gamma can NBS and ABS resist? Um, so that's basically, I'm assuming this is related to our sterilization uh, data. Uh, Lisa, do you want to take a first stab at this? We have data and we've tested at 25 kilograys and at 50 kilograys. Um, so we could we could share that uh, with um, with you. Uh, we have uh, both um, uh, physical property retention. I believe it is IZOD, and then we also have. Um, color uh, retention uh, on both 25 and, kilo, and uh, 50 kilograms. Okay. And, and some of that data is commonly found on our on our website and even within our medical brochure. So uh, we'll, we'll, we'll put a, a screenshot up here to show you what our website is, but you could download that uh, brochure and you should see towards the back there. Um, some of that data, but uh, as Lisa mentioned, for more specific data, um, we can follow up you separately if there's something that you really were interested in. Okay, all right. Uh, an another question that came in. Uh, maybe I'll handle this one. Uh, do these resins have bioattributable versions? Um, right now, at at this point, uh, not not yet. So for those folks that are um, not familiar with what a Bioattributable version is it's uh, you know for those folks focused on sustainability efforts you know Inyo Star Lucian has made a great effort to come up with different sustainability options and the bioattributable one uh, deals with applying uh, uh, bioattributable credits uh, along the feed streams and applying it down to the down uh, the finished goods um, at this point um, uh, the answer is that they're not available yet but it's something that we are looking at um, as a as an organization, um, there isn't any reason why we couldn't do that. Um, but uh, right now, most of our bioattributable efforts are focused on those applications, which seems to have um, the greatest need right now, and that is in like the, the packaging and, and food segment. Uh, but again, we are um, looking at that. So if there is a, a needs to have a follow up discussion on that uh, request, uh, we can follow up with you separately on that. All right, um, another question specific to Xylar. Steve, I'm going to hand this back to you. I think it's tied to the previous question. Uh, can you run Xylar on equipment specific for polycarbonate? Yes, uh, for polycarbonate, absolutely. Lots of customers have had success doing so. And we have a great technical service group too that can help if there's any small parameter changes you may need to make, but no issue using the uh, existing polycarbonate tooling with Xylar and Clear Blend. 
Yeah, maybe just add to that. I, I think the key thing here is that anytime we look at uh, introducing our resin to any one of our resins to someone who may not be familiar with it, you know, uh, one of the things that I think is fantastic about our company is that we will offer, you know, local support, you know, uh, on-site uh, technical services. And in the case of uh, this question, you know, with Xyler on a polycarbonate line, uh, like Steve mentioned, it could be done. But the thing is that, you know, I, I, we caution folks that the process parameters do have to be adjusted. It's not necessarily um, something that you just drop in and without making any minor adjustments. But these are usually well within typical process parameters, nothing outlandish. Um, but once they get set, um, again, no issues from our experiences uh, moving to uh, this different material. Okay. All right, uh, another question that came in, um, with all of the supply chain shortages going on, are these products readily available right now? And so that's a great question. Um, I know supply chain's been at the forefront of everyone's mind. And the answer is yes. So uh, Xylar and Clear Blend and uh, Lustre and ABS, um, we have uh, readily available supplies. These are materials that fortunately for Inyo Star Illusion um, have not been impacted um, by supply chain shortages. So uh, yes, they are available. Um, so if interested, we could partner you with our, our local account reps to, uh, uh, to investigate that. Um, you know, obviously we would just have our standard lead times, but uh, there are no uh, supply constraints regarding these two product lines. Okay. Uh, Question came in, what is the advantage of Xylar compared to GIPS? Um, is, and is Clearland, Clearblend uh, still available? So uh, Steve, you wanna make a first pass at the, uh, I'll, I'll answer the, the second part, because uh, again, it's tied to the earlier one. Yes, Clearblend is available. Um, again, we have had no issues uh, supplying that to the market. So again, if interested, it, we would put you in contact with our our local sales team, you know, or even our local distributors um, that are authorized to sell the material. But again, no restrictions on that material. Um, Steve, Xylar versus Gyps? Yeah, thank you, Alex. I would say uh, typically it would be that uh, toughness versus stiffness. I think it has a, a great range of properties there and a little bit higher level toughness as well. Elisa, I don't know if you have something to add. I know you have a lot of experience yep. on that. Uh, the other thing I would point out is that the GIPS uh, can be used, uh, our food contact grades can be used in risk class one applications, but it cannot be used in a risk class two per our medical policy. Um, but the Xylar can be used in risk class two applications. So that would be another reason if you had a risk class two uh, application to use Xylar and, and uh, not GIPS. Um, here's another question. Uh, our company is headquartered in the U.S., but our molding is being done in China. Is the Lustran 348 available in China? Uh, the answer is yes. Uh, so one of the things that we talk about with our products that we promote in healthcare, even though we might have one region uh, produce them, uh, they are globally available. So if there is an interest in uh, in China or any other country for that matter, you know, again, we would put you in touch with our our, our local offices there, uh, and from there they could determine, you know, what's the best way to uh, suit your needs. Whether it is uh, trying to supply, if it makes sense, on a direct relationship, or putting you in touch with one one of our regional um, authorized distributors. Uh, question came in: Are are these recyclable? Um, Lisa, you want to take a first stab at this one? The materials are recyclable. You could recycle, you could regrind uh, ABS, you could regrind a Xylar. Do most medical OEMs regrind and put the regrind back into production? Most of them, uh, almost everyone I've worked with, no, they do not. Um, but they can be used in, the regrind can be used in other applications. Uh, also, when you say, can they be recycled, um, the, they could also be um, incinerated, uh, the parts, uh, if that's what you mean by recycle, um, they can be that. And also when you are 
when the molder is molding the xylar or the, the um, ABS, the 348, uh, can a little bit of the startup or the, that regrind at the press go back in? Typically, yes, it, it can, as long as it's clean. Okay. Um, another question came up. I may have to, we may have to follow up with this one separately because just to be a little more specific, but uh, a question that just popped up is, are, are any products in range of Shore A hardness? Uh, so I think that depends, right? I, uh, um, we, aside from Xylar and Clear Blend and, you know, the luster we talked about, you know, again, we do have a very diverse product portfolio. And I think if you have a specific Shore A hardness that you're looking for, um, you know, I, I would encourage a discussion with either Lisa or Steve privately or any one of our uh, technical folks to make sure we can dial into exactly the application. Okay, uh, another question. Uh, can Xylar or ClearBlend be used in applications in which PETG is typically used? Uh, Steve, do you, would you like to make a first pass at that? Absolutely. We've actually seen it in, in several applications where PETG may be a bit over-engineered for that application. You're not going to get the exact same high level of toughness and stiffness, but typically um, in many applications we've found it'll be somewhere along that curve that the application actually requires, and we would typically have a Xylar grade that would work very well in that application. So again, there will be some of those edge cases where it really does require those PETG level properties, um, but in most cases, Xylar is definitely good for you to take a look at. Yeah, maybe I could add a little bit to that as well. So again, PETG, and like so I think I heard you know someone ask about polycarbonate. Fantastic grades in the market, um, and I think you know with our portfolio, we have been successful demonstrating that we can also meet uh, the requirements. And I, to add to what Steve is saying, um, I think a big part of this is to try to figure out really zero in and what the end application is and how it's going to be used. So um, I, I don't think we would say that let's say like a Xylar clear blend would automatically mimic everything that a PETG or even a polycarbonate does. But what we have seen some successes with is if you find out what the key parameters, we might have something in our portfolio that could work to just meet those attributes versus some others that maybe aren't as uh, important. And we've also have done a lot of work in just showing how some of our products in combination can really dial into um, uh, uh, end attributes. You know, we've had successes in containers demonstrating uh, pulling vacuum, impact performance, and even uh, a certain level of clarity that need to be uh, necessary uh, by the end OEM. So again, for something like this, it's hard to give a blanket, hey, you know, one size fits all. I, this would be a great opportunity to have a follow-up discussion with our, our technical folks on. Okay. Uh, isn't Xylar 960 a common grade? only produced by your U.S. facility. Um, Steve, would you like to answer this question? Yes, I would. So Xylar 960 specifically is produced only domestically here. Um, 631, for example, was one of the examples I gave earlier where we uh, produce it from the same intermediates both here and overseas in uh, Asia. So depending on the specific grade of Xylar, there's either uh, there, there could be multiple um, sources of supply. Again, the same intermediate locations, but also a little bit uh, better security supply with multiple uh, locations for final products. So it depends on the grade. Another one where if you have a, a specific one in mind, we could definitely have, uh, have more uh, of an exchange on that as well. All right, uh, another question about, uh, I, I guess this might be related to the early question about bioattributable uh, stuff. So how about bio-based medical ABS? Uh, and then even a question about content percent. Um, so like I mentioned earlier, you know, across the across the breadth of our, our product portfolio, even beyond healthcare, you know, uh, pursuing uh, sustainable products is a, is a paramount importance to our company. Um, a lot of efforts going on. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, we are pursuing things like uh, bioattributable credits. Uh, if you looked at the press, you may have even seen a lot of work that our company is doing on uh, chemical recycling, uh, breaking down 
uh, polystyrene back into styrene, uh, virgin styrene monomer, which then can be distributed across our, our pipeline. So a lot of these things are being explored. Uh, can all of these uh, be applied to medical ABS or let's say reintroduced to our Lustran 348? Uh, the answer is yes, it could be done. Uh, right now, we are still working on the economies of scale. Um, you know, from our company perspective, the, the key focus is trying to hit those industries that uh, seem to be um, most pressed by uh, some of these sustainability topics. But uh, this is something that is in our pipeline, trying to see how we translate it into, um, you know, specifically into the healthcare applications. But, uh, you know, we're still a little ways off on that, but it's, it is definitely on our radar screen, radar screen that we are uh, trying to address. Any other questions, guys? That was that was uh, a lot of good content that came in from the, the group here. Um, we have a few minutes left. Uh, anyone have any other questions they'd like to submit to us? Okay. All right. Looks like the uh, the chatter here has gone quiet. So, with that, you know, definitely like to thank you for your, your time today. Um, we always we recognize everyone's busy these days. It's been a, a crazy last couple of years and your time is valuable. So taking the opportunity to spend 40, 45 minutes with us, just learning more about our, our product line is greatly appreciated. Um, as uh, we mentioned several times before, if you have more specific questions, we would love to talk to you more in, in depth. Um, on screen, you can see uh, the contact information for our Steve and Lisa. You know, these would be the first folks that uh, could address any of your uh, primary questions about application usage, resin requirements, and, and so forth. And you know, if they don't have the answer at their fingertips, they have a wealth of technical mm. experts in at their fingertips. Um, also, uh, for anyone that is going to be at, at uh, in Anaheim in a couple of weeks at MDM West, uh, we will be there as well. Um, we have a booth. I I hope if you're out there, you do take the time to stop by and say hello, and again see. Uh, more about what our company can offer, uh, not only with these two product lines, but other things that within our portfolio. Um, so we'll be there all week. Um, our booth number is uh, uh, 1337. And as I mentioned earlier, a lot of this content that you are seeing today, well, we will get you a, a copy um, emailed to you for signing up. Um, and if you need to access this uh, webinar again, it will be found um, on our website at uh, inyostarillusion.com. So. With that, unless there are any other questions, I guess we could sign off. Again, thank you um, for your time today. Thank you. Thank you very much. Driving success together.